and we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome here to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and I have, of course, Brian with me, the Brian Eak. Brian Eak. Hello. You always want to say that wrong. What's up, Brian? Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. You know, just uh, uh, having a good time. You know, I, I didn't get to read comics much yesterday for the comic book day, but you know, it's always the weekend. Nice. Your so. beard's coming along nice, nice and full, and I like that. Yeah. But like, yeah. what kind of like who puked on your wall, dude? Man, yeah, I uh, I got a bunch of stuff framed recently, and I was just telling my wife, I was like, I don't really want to hang a bunch of stuff up until I paint these walls. Uh, this this is the color they came when we bought the house about <laughs> five years ago. I haven't. It is uh, not a good color to match with stuff. That is for yeah. sure. So <laughs> you know, maybe you can turn into some kind of form of green screen or whatever. But anyway, enough about yeah. Brian and his puke colored room. Yeah, we're yeah. here with Good Justin on. Richards, everybody. Justin Richards. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Justin, of course, is the writer of one of PCP's favorite comics going on right now, Finger Guns. Three issues are out. The third issue came out like two weeks ago, and the fourth one is on the way. And we had the pleasure, thanks to Justin, of reading it. And holy cow, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. So, Justin, thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Love the love the chat that you have, or the you know the the audience that you guys have built up and you guys are some of the best on YouTube for sure. So oh. happy to be here. He's, he's, he's trying to get easy questions with flattery and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard through the grapevine that finger guns started off as a dream, right? Yeah. Or it was inspired by a dream. Can you tell us a little bit about that buddy? Yeah. So it was a dream that I had um i was it was kind of like first person account really i i'd say like if i had to pick i think i was in like wes's shoes essentially um and yeah i just had this ability to like i i'm kind of a dork anyway and i use finger guns all the time because i'm it's just you know what's up uh but yeah so from there it was like you know i could affect people's like i could make people get mad or sad or you know what have you and then like there was like another another kid in school that could do it. And yeah, just kind of, that was like the real basis and kind of sat on it for a while. And then um, I got involved with, with it, with a friend of mine named Sabs Cooper. You can see her name on the book actually um, at, with a story by credit uh, that her and I share because we developed it early on together. Yeah. And she helped me really shape the characters of who Wes and Sadie were and, and uh, like kind of the, you know, we did like the outline and started doing some early scripting stuff. And then, yeah, I just kind of took off from there. Heck yeah, man. How did you uh, wind up approaching Vault with the, with the idea? So I used to uh, review comics on YouTube like yourself. And uh, so I met the Vault because we reviewed like their early, early, early stuff. And we loved it. You know, we reviewed Fissure and a few of those other early titles and then just kept going, you know, heathen, all those. And uh, so we kind of became buddies with with the crew of Vault. And uh, I sent an outline for Finger Guns to Tim Daniel. And he was like, send this to Adrian now. <laughs> and so I did. And then we talked about it at Emerald City last year and he liked it. So here we are. That's super cool. I remember, I'll, I'll be honest, when I first read the solicitation for it, I was like, well, that sounds silly. Like that, I mean, I was like, I don't know how you're going to make a series out of that. But man, one of my favorite things about this book is that the concept is, I mean, but it was an intriguing concept because I was like, I want to see what they do with this. And dude, in three issues, you have completely risen the level up on that book and what it's actually about. Because to me, the uh, book is, thank you. it's so much more than the concept, right? And that's how it should be, right? But it's the characters, Wes and Sadie. This, this, this book lives and dies with them. Uh -huh. And you have made in my opinion, some very incredibly well-rounded, compelling, and relatable characters. Okay. I don't know anybody that didn't come from some kind of troubled home. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I really like in the book how Wes has a different type of troubled home than Sadie does. So I thought yeah. that was really cool. How did that all come about? How was that obviously a, a passion for you to kind of put that subtext in there, right? Yeah, you know, the, when I started thinking about, you know, emotions and how I was going to get, you know, I... I, I won't go into complete detail because it could lead to some spoilerish territory for issue five even, but um, I had a plan where I wanted to go. And 
when it, and when I thought about how I could possibly tell a compelling story to get there, uh, it came down to, uh, you know, these two kids being very much the same, but also very much different and being able to relate to each other, even though their situations are different. You know, Wes is a basic white kid from a neglected home, whereas Sadie is a, a, a person of color who, you know, her parents are immigrants and there's a much more physical level of abuse that happens in her house. And so they have that in common and yet everything else is different. And it just made for two, you know, it let me tell two really good characters, I guess. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Brian, what do you think about the book, man? Yeah. Well, I, was, I, I, I like that point you're bringing up. I mean, cause they, they are different, but you know, they have some of the similarities, but you know, you even points out, you know, he's like, I can't really relate. You know what I mean? Like at this, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I don't see how this is going to work and things like that. That last issue really, I thought kind of, uh, you know, really explored that, uh, the difference because like, you know, you're kind of weaving in and out of both the stories as they're going and they're really kind of heading in different directions, you know, and everything. I thought that was great. You know, it was really interesting to watch that flow kind of going back and forth. And everything. So. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I really want the kids to be, you know, they're both kind of loners and they're both kind of on been on their own path for a long time. And while their paths are converging now, doesn't necessarily mean that they're always on the same path but it's you know a matter of them learning you know what kind of friendship it is that they can get from each other and uh you know just looking to not be alone anymore and finding it in a really odd you know not expected place oh yeah yeah what well, i was wondering were you uh were you working with uh val on the art before you approached ball or did that i know um, I actually pitched the book without an artist attached at all, uh, no designs, no nothing, which is not usual. Uh, and so I was lucky that Adrian liked it based on that. Um, and so, yeah, I was able to work with Adrian to, you know, look at artists that we were both interested in. And Val is, I worked with him on a personal project of mine. Uh, I hired him as a colorist I, uh, through a, a writing buddy that we have in common. And yeah, I looked through his portfolio and I was like, ooh, he could really do that. Like, cause I wanted a, a what I find to be a perfect blend of like, it is a comic book slash kind of cartoony, but it's also, you know, everyday life kind of thing. So it's it's a perfect blend of of cartoon and real, and like he was just really good at doing it. It's super clean lines, and is very versatile. Because I I don't know if you've seen much of his other stuff, but like his horror stuff is insane. Yeah, yeah it's so. a really great style for this book. I thought it was great, and the characters are they're they're so expressive, and for a book that's dealing with the manipulation of emotions, that's very important. I can't imagine anybody else doing this book. I mean, it's yeah. part of the character of it, I think. I've I've come to say the exact, I think I was just saying that like three days ago with a, another writing buddy of mine, Brent uh, Hart, Harshman. Uh, we were talking and, and both of us were like, yeah, I don't see how anybody else could have done this book but Val and had it come out as good as it has been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Rebecca's coloring. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we were blessed with her, uh, honestly, because she wasn't even, uh, you know, top pick per se on my list because uh, yeah. she, she had only done she said destroy um, and a few other things that I had read and like I don't know she's just somehow she keeps slipping under the radar and I don't know how because her work is fantastic she did oh what was that image book she did Our she, no it was it's this fantasy story that's gonna bug me, but I, it will probably come back to me at a random time later. Um, oh, but yeah, it was like a darker kind of like fairy tale story, and it was really cool. And like she's just obviously really versatile, and uh, came that like my top choice was uh, booked up and busy, and so Adrian was like, "What do you think of Rebecca and Alti?" I was like, "Oh yeah, that would be great," and she brought even more to it than I even thought she would. Yeah. Now she was the the colors on Bog Bodies, but are you talking talking about something before that over at Image? Yeah. Because that came out after Finger Guns, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that just came yeah, out. Yeah, it was. Yeah, no, it's something from like a year or two ago. It's gonna bug me. It'll come to you if you stop yeah. thinking about it. It'll pop right back in. Exactly. Totally will. I love but, the coloring. Yeah. She, they're bold choices, but there's also like this texture to it that I just mm. absolutely find amazing. And I also think Taylor is a severely underappreciated letterer in the business too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a favorite of mine back when I was reviewing. I mean, he still is a favorite of mine. He's really talented. And like, honestly, he's, his name, as far as talent alone, goes with, you know, Jim Campbell and Hassan and all those other guys that are doing great work right, right. now. Did you ever read that uh, Wailing Blade book that he did with Rich Duick? Uh, I have that in my inbox, but I haven't read it yet. His lettering on that is fantastic because he has this like this effect to the to the blade itself. It's just super clean, super awesome. Yeah, he does really cool. Like that's kind of the thing I like that Taylor does is he when you let him go wild on something, he can do some really inventive stuff. One of my favorite things that I've ever seen done lettering wise was from him in a tomahawk yeah. with Don with Donnie Gates and Ian Betterman. Uh, he did this thing where a guy gets sliced in half clean down the middle and he had his uh his line which was he just says fuck he's like oh fuck yeah and it and it's it's also cut in half and split it's really cool <laughs> it's i it love was, it don't you have a tattoo of tomahawk i do it's uh let's see if i can get that yeah look at that oh, oh wow that's awesome <laughs> yep. done that's by great. the creator by ian betterman yeah that's so he also cool. he did that one which is murder falcon oh dude oh wow so yeah. he did the tattoos too yeah Oh, yeah, wow. he was he was a tattoo artist before he ever did any in anything with comics. He was just Donnie Cates. He was Donnie's tattoo artist. Oh, really? So. That's how that oh. happened. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that makes sense though. Yeah, that's <laughs> that hilarious. Style, it? Yeah, that makes sense with that art style for sure. Yeah, he. I believe he invented the Atomahawk, and Donnie saw it in his studio and was like, "What is that?" And he's like, "That's the Atomahawk," and he was just like, "We should do a comic of that." And man, there we go. I want That's so much great. more a tomahawk in my life, to be honest. Like, Please, yes, Donny Kate could just quit everything else and just go to do that solely, and I'd be happy. But yeah, yeah we'd miss okay. out a lot more, though, right? Uh, I don't know. I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, right? I, would, <laughs> I would. I would. I would be on. Bueller's um, got a question. Let's see what Bueller wants to know. He says, "Now that the book has been out for a bit, three issues, and soon to be a fourth, are you surprised by the response you have received?" I am uh, mostly in that I just didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, like my first interview I did when we announced the book, uh, I talked about how even when I had the dream and I woke up and like I had this dream, like right when I was just starting to be like, hey, I want to try and write stories. So I was trying to think of concepts and stuff. And I was like, this is what I've got. It's like finger guns. <laughs> like, uh and so like i knew like you know i know that the the concept is kind of like you know on the silly side when you first read it and that the title is and that you know we have fun we have a lot of fun in the book um so it doesn't really quite sell itself as what it is with the level of emotions that we try to dig into with it but um yeah so i didn't know what to expect and it's been really nice to see a lot. I mean, almost entirely positive feedback. Yeah. Oh, well, we love it here. And it seems like most of the PCP army loves it as well. Um, and it immediately the art on it immediately, like just took me back when I saw the first cover and, and I was like, I just love those, those colors, like the green and the red. It reminded me a little bit of Freddy Krueger. And, and then I just love it. And I love that you throw all these fun references in it. And I remember, when I did my advanced review, I didn't quite understand where it, like what time it was set in because you were throwing in all these different references. And uh, you said that's something that you're really into. And obviously if you've been doing it on this side of things, you're a big fan of pop culture, obviously. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Val and I both are, you know, we're big nerds for a lot of stuff. And actually we found out after he was hired on, you know, we started talking more and more and like we're into all the same shit basically. Um, but yeah, so we love, you know, that kind of like 90s grunge, uh, industrial pop, like punk and all that, like that kind of era of music. And so that's just kind of what Wes ended up being into as well. Wes is kind of representative of both Val and I a lot. Yeah. Um, 
uh, so like his headphones that he wears uh, all the time, uh, those are actually the exact same pair of headphones that Val has. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. wow. That's a nice little bit of information right there for everybody. Yeah. Out there. That's in PCP exclusive, right? Yep. Like, yep, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, Brian. We did it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be a part of that. Yeah, we knew we'd get something. Yeah. Uh, music is actually a thing that like I didn't intend for it to be as heavily important to the book as it kind of is. Uh, but it just because Val and I are such music fans and thus Wes is and it, you know, you can relate through music a lot. So when we get the scene in issue three with Sadie and Wes having a fun little dance party, uh, you know, it was a way that they were able to to relate to each other in another way where uh, her mom, Sadie's mom and her are into music that Wes's mom was into. And so like they kind of get to relate through that. And it's just, you know, we've actually done playlists for the for the kids on Spotify. Nice. So, yeah, I got to check that. out. I was actually about to ask if you have a playlist for for finger guns or something like that. So that's super cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to ask that as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a Wes and a Sadie playlist, and Wes is very much me and Val just going, let's have fun with all this music that we like, and then Sadie is, she borders on that and has like some good 80s hits and then some modern, more modern hits and stuff. What are some of the artists that you would find on their playlists? Um, like with Wes, we did a lot of like, I know I put in like The Hives and... Um, you know, we we have a lot of um, let's see. I did uh, LCD sound system. Oh, nice. Yeah, and jeez, uh, of course, like the, it's like twenty five tracks long, and I can't even think. Bunny and the <laughs> Echo Men is on there. Um, I think some Seven Nation. No, not Seven Nation Army, but a different song. Oh no, we went racking tours rather than them. But yeah, like you know, a lot of that kind of stuff, like really punky. Yeah um for the most part you know and i think i also put in some uh um talking heads because i'm a huge talking heads fan and i had west buy a talking heads album in the first issue yeah that's right yeah yeah, yeah w that was specifically I, I i made sure it was that album nice. uh, you got to throw talking heads in there whenever you can yeah and then like we, the one way that we had some fun with uh, like the two uh, kind of merging was we did some, um, have you ever heard of Screaming Females before? No. They're a really rad punk band, uh, modern punk. And uh, it's actually only got one female in the band. But uh, Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wes listens to Screaming Females. And then while Sadie does more pop, uh, he kind of like they, they found a middle ground for both of them where um, there's a the Screaming Females did a cover of a Taylor Swift song. Oh, and cool. it's actually really <laughs> good. So we kind of like blended them there, found like that middle ground because she'll have like Halsey and um, I put the look on there because that song is the one that I ended up choosing for issue three that they listened to for their dance party. So some rock set and other 80s like that. Yeah, you know, some Lizzie, I think, is on there. Nice. Things like that. Heck yeah. Do you do you listen to music when you're writing? I do. Um, but it's usually I aim for like original soundtracks or things without lyrics. Yeah. Um, but like uh for the later half of Finger Guns and a lot of the stuff that I've been putting on lately, I've been getting back into nine inch nails a lot. So I've been listening to the fragile. Um, like oh, almost a, on repeat. It's <laughs> such a damn good album, man. Yeah, it's so deep with like tons of just some of the best lyrics, like some of my favorite lyrics ever written. So nice. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see them on that tour. Back oh, in, nice. Uh, I was living in Atlanta at the time at, in college, and I, 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 somebody had tickets because like that, that, that was one of those shows that's you know shows that sold out in like ten minutes. <laughs> You know, it was actually back enough when uh, Marilyn Manson opened for him and, you know, he 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 had not made it. You know, I mean, he wasn't that big by that point. So, but yeah, yeah that was one of my that was a great show. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're great. I saw them on like when 
around with like with with teeth came out like 2006 2007 something like that oh well and yeah fantastic show still i saw them yeah. much later i saw them play probably in like 2010 ish i would say like in nashville and it was great and we were like super super close yeah and then and then we saw them several years ago in atlanta and they were playing a double a double headlining show with uh, Soundgarden. So I actually got to see Soundgarden for the first mm -hmm. time too. And I'm really glad I got to see that obviously now. And yeah. uh, dude, Nine Inch Nails is just great. And uh, for the Soundgarden show is when they were doing, it was right after it's the album that has like copy of a on it or whatever. It was right during that. Right. And uh, so the first time I saw them, they had like backup singers and they had this full band and all this craziness. And the second time I saw them, it was like, we're going to do it all with just like four or five people. And so they like had a much more stripped down version of everything, but it was still really cool and high energy. Oh yeah. Trent's the beast, dude. I think, yeah. I think nine. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Just, just in. <laughs> I like it, Brett. Like that. <laughs> Brett was wanting to know this and I definitely was going to ask this too. Are there any more projects on the horizon? Anything else you got going on that totally. you know, obviously, obviously don't spoil anything that you can't. I can, I can give you some, I have a personal project that I'm planning on launching for free on my website once I'm done making my website, which I've been, you know, struggling to do forever. But uh, yeah, it's a, a personal, like a little short story. It's like a little zine uh, with a five page silent short story that I wrote. Uh, and I had Gavin Gigi draw it. Oh, uh, cool. From oh, cool. Uh, going to the chapel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We met yeah. him, Brian, didn't we? We met him last October. He was super we cool. We did. Yeah. We did. Over he in was, Memphis. Yeah. He's in a Memphis. Great dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's super nice. I have a couple projects in the works with him. Uh, one that is like ready to go around and pitch. Um, and then another one that we've, we've agreed to work on together, but uh, he's a little busy for doing anything else with it yet. But yeah, I've got a couple with him and four more in the works that are all mostly ready to pitch. Nice. So I'm working on it. What, what What's like your favorite genre to write in? I don't know yet. Um, I'm a okay. new enough writer that uh, I kind of like writing a little, like I, I like trying new stuff. I like trying new things. Like I'm actually doing uh, one of the ones I'm working on, like right now outlining is a space story and I've never written a space story before, but I, I was like, what would I do with a space story? And I, th I think I got something pretty cool working on that with um, Emily Pearson. Oh, cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. And she's bringing really cool energy to the designs and stuff. So Awesome. Looking forward to whatever is coming up on the horizon for sure. For sure. Let's Appreciate see. It. Unstoppable's got something. Which artists are you hoping to collaborate with in the future? And would you sell your soul to the big two? <laughs> <laughs> um honestly like i obviously everybody's got like you know their back pocket big two pitch you know and i've got a couple of ideas for some dc stuff but you know uh, i like doing indies and and so like i would i don't think i'd sell my soul but obviously i would love to work work over there with some i'd like to do some out of like out of continuity miniseries kind of stuff okay you want to go like the 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 Tom Taylor route. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do with it. You know, any particular characters that you'd like to do? Yes. <laughs> um, the ones that I've got like ready to go pitches for, I've got an OMAC story that I'm bringing the fire to. Honestly, you just like, got me and Brian excited. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Like if I can get a contact in there, that'll be the first thing I pitch and I hope I get it. Um, Omac and uh, Swamp Thing. I have a cool Swamp Thing idea, I think. Which actually, I have a commission. Is it was there? There. Of oh, yeah. my, it's a swamp, swamp Thing from Kelly Williams. That's actually of my my concept, my idea. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. cool. But yeah. So, and then I've got like, it's not big too, but I want to do a TMNT story really bad. I'm a huge oh. Ninja Turtle fan. So, who's your favorite turtle? Um, Raphael. See, that tells me more oh, about you than anything too. else we've talked about. Yeah, I actually know that you're a Mikey fan. Mikey's a close second, I won't lie. But I uh, 
Raf. Uh, he's just so he was always the deep depressed one, and yeah, I think you can tell from <laughs> finger guns that I relate to that. So, yeah, I always was just wanting to uh, eat pizza and play video games when I was a kid. So I liked Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's still all. I, well, I don't play as much video games. Actually, I've been playing more NES games lately. I've been playing Paperboy lately, and it's right. really been pissing that's me so the, hell, the hell. Yeah, it's. I hate that game, actually. Yeah, I'm starting to hate it too. I'll be honest with you. I've only I haven't made it past Tuesday yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that game's freaking hard. I don't even know if I ever beat the first level, man. Yeah, it's freaking. Do you ever play that, Brian? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Old school. That's Atari, I thought though, isn't it? That's NES. Oh, okay. They may have done a, an Atari game if they if they did, it would have been terrible, like even worse. You know, <laughs> yeah. but. Yeah, oh, it's so bad. And like shit just comes out. So, Brian, the basic idea is that you are a paper boy. I know that's an exciting premise for a video game, right? You're a paper boy. So you have to like go down the street and throw papers at the houses that have subscriptions to your paper, which you can tell because of their their color. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very precise about where you throw that newspaper. And then all this crazy stuff keeps getting in your way, like cars, um, people dogs a runaway lawnmower a tornado the grim reaper like what <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah, do you get upgrades or anything as you go or i don't know <laughs> I no, in my experience but like i said i never got that far <laughs> never gone that far <laughs> yeah, it's like how do, how do you how do you meet these escalating threats if you don't get to upgrade right i don't know man i can't find a way to outrun the tornado to save my life like seriously at all <laughs> at all but whatever I don't even know what we were talking about before that, but that's just how this show works. So. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm getting a couple of commissions from Kelly too, actually uh, cool. slightly related to OMAC. I'm getting a clarion, the witch boy and, and a demon, uh, the demon, like kind of companion pieces and stuff like that. His art is amazing. So, yes, I, so I guess we'll circle that back to the question that, that I, I answered half of, which is, uh, oh. What artists would I like to collaborate with? Kelly would be on that list. Um, Liana Kangas, who you just had on your show. I really want to collaborate with her. Skylayer Patridge. Um, if we're talking like reaching for the stars kind of stuff, like Daniel Warren Johnson is. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, I don't think there's anybody doing better work in comics for like for my vibe and what I love to see. Like, dude. <laughs> Did you see his recent commission uh, where it was uh, Colossus and Juggernaut? I think I, I think missed that one. I just saw it today. I saw a Godzilla one that was just. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I love Godzilla. But yeah. His commissions are always just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I, you should look at that Colossus Juggernaut one, too. It just I, I want to say I just saw it in the past day or two. But yeah, it's. Uh, and, and I'm bringing that up because it's recent because like pretty much everyone I've seen, it's like, wow, he puts a lot into these. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you get, they're not cheap, uh, his commissions, but like you get your money worth, you know, like he, he doesn't hold back at all. Like he puts hours of work into those. Yeah. And, uh, awesome. there's the, the, the energy that's in those two, like in every yes. single thing he does is absolutely amazing. How much energy is there? And it's just yeah, that's my favorite thing. That's what I always say too. It's just like, how much like motion and action and just yeah energy is the perfect word honestly to describe his art just energetic yeah um i got to meet him last year in at heroes con he was super cool it was a super quick meeting but i did get my murder falcon number one signed so that was always cool murder falcon was one of my favorite comic books at that time and uh, I, you might say i liked it a little yeah right just a little yeah. bit you've been reading the, his wonder woman book yeah i haven't read the latest issue that's actually like top of my read pile right now but I I read the first two or yeah two I think is what I've read. The issue three will break your heart like issue three of Finger Guns. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know what That's, it is with these issue threes, but they're yeah, like this is where we got to do it. This is where we got to just crush their soul. <laughs> Rip that heart out, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's a I I try to on Twitter. You know, I don't have like a massive following or anything, but I try to put it out there of like fair warning on issue three because. I'm coming for those heartstrings. For yeah, sure. absolutely. You know, you were talking about the OMAC project. Daniel Warren Johnson would be perfect for that. You know I mean? His, his sense of energy and motion that he brings is very reminiscent to me of Kirby. 
And I'm assuming you're a Kirby fan since you have an OMAC pitch. <laughs> How else would that happen? <laughs> yeah, and I've got Kirby Crackle tattooed on my arm. Yeah, yeah. right? Oh, good oh, nice. Yeah, I love Kirby aesthetic and stuff. In fact, like, uh, I don't know, like, that one of the pitches that I'm working with Gavin on, we have some serious Kirby aesthetic going on. I'll send you. I'll send you a picture after the show. Yeah, please do. I'll tell you some of that. It's Heck pretty yeah. cool. What's your favorite Kirby uh, project? What's your favorite Kirby work? Is it OMAC? Is it something else? Uh, I do love OMAC stuff, but I mean, like the Fourth World stuff. You can't like you know, and especially like what that stuff's gone on to inspire with like Mister Miracle from Tom King and those get in Mitch Gerads and yeah, I love all that mm-hmm. stuff. Like I would die to play with like the fourth world characters like any of them yeah right big barda would be a fascinating character to write about pretty much anything but like dark side because he's just been done done to death uh did did you read the forager series the one that mike Allred did with his uh brother uh it was his his wife and son were involved on that um and yeah i i read three issues of it i think i don't think i read the whole the whole thing it was back when like there was a point when i had a 90 books on my pull list so okay i was constantly shifting priorities on series and stuff back then okay so it was his son that he wrote it with is yeah that- yeah lee is is their son so oh he, okay. he wrote it. mike drew it and i think he might have had a co-writing and then laura colored it okay yeah that one uh it does a good job though of wrapping up a lot of the uh, kind of st- the storylines, the way they hang from when, you know, when Kirby was doing those stories, like, you know, I mean, like the, the OMAC picks up from the end of that, you know, that eight issue run he did, you know, back yeah. in the, you know, when he created it and all that. And honestly, Forger was one of my favorite characters from that. <laughs> right. Favorite designs from that uh, fourth world story. So. Yeah. One that I was like, I loved, and I think it didn't, didn't get quite enough praise was the commandy challenge thing that came out like a oh, yeah. two years that was so fun to see like the the different writing and uh, artist teams like try to challenge each other and one up each other and trap each other like that was just cool and commandy yeah. you know commandy is oh max grandson so can't go wrong with that yeah true. that was a uh, that was interesting the way it kept it would uh the way they were trapping each other i thought it, it kept you know kind of ramping up and escalating and stuff like that but yeah that one i ended up waiting to trade to get because uh I think I forgot to sign up for it and missed a couple issues, but um, I remember uh, I did go back and get one of them just because it had a Paul Pope cover. Uh, nice. So, you know, that, if, there's, pass that up. if there's one <laughs> issue worth like hunting down in single issue, in my opinion, there's one that I believe it was Tom King wrote it and um, uh, uh, Kevin Eastman drew it. And it's just oh insane. It's really good. Yeah, for a while, Tom King said that that was like his favorite single issue he'd ever done. He may still say it. I don't know. Now it's got to be Batman Elmer Fudd because that right? was amazing. Oh, man. That was amazing. <laughs> so good. So good. I, vote, uh, like, I voted for that for issue of the year. I nice. freaking love that issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still remember uh, going into the store the day it came out and, and uh, I was interested in getting it. And then, you know, Robbie was like, you know, uh, yeah, you're going to love this. So it was the pick of the week, man. Yeah. And I was not expecting it at all. I was just like, no. you're like, no. even Tom King can't. Oh, never mind. Tom King can't. <laughs> Good. I just thought it was a great way that he, he made them like real people, you know, but you could still tell distinctly who they were. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. Then he brought him back in some, in a, in a later issue, I think in Batman or something like that. <laughs> and then he brought the, the porky pig bartender character back or something like that. Nice. Oh. I think. I mean, I it think. was a bar in Gotham. So exactly. Right. It might well. exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I have a five year plan for blade, which I right. make sure to mention as much as possible in case anybody ever happens to catch it who can do something about that, but a five-year plan on Blade the Vampire Hunter, and uh, it would be fantastic. And Juan would, Ferreira would be who I would pick for the artist, but I'll take anybody. I would <laughs> I would read the shit out of that. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Blade, Blade's a character to me that just doesn't get the comic book respect that he's gotten in those Wesley Snipes movies. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
or yeah. at least the first two. I, I only remember two Blade films. I don't think they did a third one. Um, <laughs> that just yeah, that just didn't happen. Ryan Reynolds never met Wesley yeah. Snipes. Yep, and the, yep, it was the Baron. It was in the Berenstein Bears universe where that happened, I believe. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, I've uh, got I've got one super obscure uh, thing that I would love to do a story for that I don't think DC would ever let me do. Um, there's a character called Snowflame. You ever heard of him? Yeah, they just brought Snowflame back in Catwoman. For real? Yeah, and the news is Catwoman. It's actually yeah, yeah. raising in price because everybody's like hype on it or something well, like that. Snowflame was a he existed in one issue back in the late eighties. Yeah. Of an awful, <laughs> awful comic, but he was glorious. And yeah. If they yeah. ever were to let me do like an out of continuity miniseries for him i've got some fucking crazy ideas for that you see black label all the way baby yeah. <laughs> <Black> <laughs> label. <laughs> yeah i didn't read the the catwoman issue but it's the newest issue it just came out uh wednesday or okay. tuesday i guess now because dc releases tuesday but it was like issue 23 and uh everybody was losing their minds and they were like yeah they, they brought snow flame back i'm like who the hell is snow flame and they're like you, <laughs> the cocaine really like you know, like he's yeah and no, it, does he derive his power from it, but he worships it as his god. so crazy. <laughs> Snowflake oh. is the best, yeah. That Billy was wants like, Blade versus Snowflake. I mean, Snow, uh, snow uh, not Snowflake, it's... Uh, flame, yeah. Flame, yeah. I'm sure his thing auto-corrected to that. Was it, was it his series? Was it... I mean, what... No, I mean, was he it was in The New Guardians... New Guardians. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Spun out of an event book called Millennium. Okay. The Guardians of the Universe were like, yeah, no, we're, we're done. We're going to give it to these other people. And the writer of the series, like, wanted to, like, use it as, like, an adult book to, like, examine adult things. And it just ended up being so bad. <laughs> so bad and so from what i understand they blame editorial but like it's so bad <laughs> it's some of the worst comics you'll ever read but it gave us snow flame so can't <laughs> oh. he's an issue Dealer, you know that if i do my blade book ghost thrasher's coming <laughs> you know it you know it oh yeah just imagine night thrasher with the spirit of vengeance right yeah flame and skateboard all that 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 badassery. Um, I grew up reading comic books in the '90s or '80s and '90s, and uh, Brian, I think as well, right? Brian, you were in the '80s and '90s, right? Yeah, I, I did start a little earlier than you. I'm a little older, but yeah. yeah. Oh, weird, weird flex, bro. Like, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, I was in college in the '90s, so I missed a lot of this stuff that a lot of people are into. So, yeah, I got you. Like, there's, I have a gap there in the early '90s where I, I have no idea what people are talking about. <laughs> See, that's why that's why you're not a new warriors, bro. Like I am. Like in 1990, I was like nine, ten years old, and I was I thought Night Thrasher was like the coolest damn thing I'd ever seen, and that right. that fascination has never left. It's never left. And when I met Fabian Isieza, everybody kept asking Deadpool questions, but I kept bringing it back to Night Thrasher, <laughs> and he was just like, I'm. I knew that somebody out there in Alabama liked Night Thrasher. <laughs> nice. That was nice. It. it was nice. It's nice to be respected as a Night Thrasher fan. Um, how did you first get into comic books, Justin? Um, like, not, not creating, but reading. Yeah. That. I I had a couple here and there. Like I, I had some X Men books and some some stuff like that when I was a kid, but I didn't really get into it until. Um, like 2015, like fairly recently, really. Oh, wow. um, and I started reading some big two, and then I got into image books. And, you know, you find Wick Dib and Saga and other Brian K. Vaughn books and the like. And then I found Donny Kate's books and just, yeah, kept going from there. Um, what are your favorite books right now? Like coming out right now? Um, I'm only subscribed to for single issues i'm subscribed to wasted space is one of my favorites same um and my buddy ryan farrier has a book at idw called i can sell you a body yeah okay yeah i take that book and I'm, i've been getting that i think it just ended i think issue four four just came out yeah um and then the dead uh wonder woman dead earth 
it has been great. Before that, I think I was the last thing I collected was Silver Surfer Black from Donnie. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That was real. Oh, I mean, yeah. Trad Trad Moore's art was made for Silver Surfer. Yes. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the only story I read in that whole kind of saga. There, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I pretty much bought it just because I saw the, uh, you know, saw the, but the art, you know, in the in the ads, and was like, wow. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I grabbed this one. So I was a little lost trying to figure out what was going on, <laughs> but but it was fun to look at, you know, and, and get all that. So yeah, mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah, that one was a trip. And um, what was it? I just thought of an image series that I was reading. Oh, die, die is really good. I keep oh, hearing yeah. good things about die, but I read the first couple issues and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not into like RPGs or anything like that. And I was like, I think I'm missing a lot of what I'm supposed yeah. to be getting into on this book, but people I keep mean, telling me to go back to it. I won't lie that like 85% of my fandom for it is Stephanie Hans on the art. She's just oh. amazing, but yes, it is. Yeah. I, I enjoy the story enough too to keep reading it so far. Yeah. I'll definitely go back and check it out. Cause I'm a big fan of Gillen. So yeah. right, like right now, Once and Future is one of my favorites. That book is great. I loved Wicked and the Divine. So oh, yeah. his, uh, his uh, Thunderbolt, your cane of Thunderbolt. I thought that was one of the best things that came out last year. Yes. I didn't read that one. It's the, you know, uh, he's the, uh, he's the character that Ozymandias was uh, uh, based on or. Okay. Yeah. yeah he was based on that. And, uh, it, it's definitely got that Watchmen. Uh, it, it's related to the Watchmen in a way, but it's uh, like that one, that character actually reverted back or the rights came up for sale because it's a dynamite book and uh, D DC never really used that character. But uh, it's definitely got a multiverse feel and everything. And it's, it's Casper Wingard on the art. Oh, so good. And yeah, it's, it's uh, and uh, Hass does the uh, lettering on it. And one of the issues kind of looks like a uh, uh, Eddie Campbell thing. And, did, and he did like hand lettering for that. Oh, wow. I, I don't know. I highly recommend that one, but, <laughs> but yeah, like a killer team. But uh, guy, like I, I'm not, I don't know a whole bunch about the RPGs and everything. I don't know if you need to know that to appreciate that comic. Cause it's like the characters are all pretty well fleshed out, you know, fully realized and, and their interactions is kind of what drives nice. What, what, what keeps you going, you know, through the, <laughs> You know, through the book and everything. Yeah, and that artwork is. Ooh. Yeah, I bet Casper is really good. He did that um, angelic book with Simon Spurrier. That's some good stuff. Oh, wow. And he also did Limbo back in the day, which was another good. Only for that one was only good for the art, though. Okay. Limbo. I remember. I don't. That. Yeah, it's like four or five years ago, something like that. Yeah. I did read Angelica. I guess I forgot that he did the art because I did like that one. Uh, yeah. I like that one well that's a good one for sure who's the I writer like of Limbo? Spurrier. i'm not sure who wrote limbo that one was a little too far back for me to remember and like i said i didn't like the story so. why is image not crediting their creators here hold on you guys keep talking i'm now this is bothering me I'm like, i know who wrote limbo who wrote limbo yeah freaking find out yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, uh, also that uh, Peter Kane and Thunderbolt came out in an oversized edition. Oh, nice. Too, I always like that. Which, which really, the art and that, I mean, it looks so good with that. Like, I was like, yeah, I, I think I was at the deep the day, I mean, at the comic store the day that came out, like, you know, like when it opened, I was ready to get that. <laughs> it was Dan Waters. That's who wrote Limbo. Okay. That guy. Yeah, in case you care, anybody, in case, I don't know. I just I was like, I know who wrote that for some reason. And it's because it's Dan Waters from White Noise. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's got other good books, for sure. It was a postmodern, anti-postmodern book, speaking of the Peter Cannon Thunderbolt book, um, which is really good. It's a yeah. complete, it, It's completed now, and you can get it. And Isn't there an oversized hardcover, Brian, for it? That, that's what he was talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was, when yeah. Brian talks, I tune it out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame you. I would if I could, but it's, it's <laughs> nearly impossible for me to do. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a good description there from Sleepy Reader there, the postmodern, anti-postmodern. Yeah, it's Sounds good. The way that they uh, travel through different realities in that book is crazy awesome. You just you gotta check it yeah. out. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. 
Well, you know what another good comic was that I read recently was um, that I liked was Good Night Paradise from TKO. That's a great book. Speaking of oversized format. I tried to sell that one to to Brian, and he was like, look, man, I got too much on my plate already. I don't know. But I told you it was a good one, man. It was. I I read it in one sitting. Oh, wow. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, um, Well, I I did buy three TKO books, and yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there's only so much time. I'll I'll get around to it. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I've got to repile this high, so. Brian, I'm just busting your balls, man. I'm just busting your balls, man. It's no, that good. one did sound good, though. I mean, I did. That one good. sounded like one of the ones I wanted to get. Yeah, I think so. that everything TKO's done so far has been pretty solid, so. I haven't read enough. I've only read three, three of their stories, I think. Because I read Sentient, which was good. I like that one. Book. Amazing book. And then I read Eve of Extinction, which had some high, some some highs and lows. Overall, it was yeah. it was fine. I really like the lettering in that one. Ariana uh, Mayer, she's killing it. She's an up and coming letterer to keep an eye on. Yeah. And then Good Night Paradise was yeah. I I actually like that one more than Sentient. Really? Okay. Yeah. They're both really good. Um, I love Sentient though. That was one of my favorite books last year. Um, good. Sarah's another really good one. It's like the best Garth Ennis book I've read since Preacher. Like, I really liked that one. I thought that was good. I have to be in the mood for Garth Ennis books. Yeah, right? I understand. I completely get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. Me too. That, yeah. like, I, uh, there, there was a point I was I was reading The Boys when it was coming out, and I, I actually just, I didn't give up on the series because I was so close to the end. I, <laughs> I felt like, felt compelled to finish it out. But, uh, yeah, I'd kind of, I'd, at that point, I just couldn't, I'd gotten worn out, I think. <laughs> He can wear you down. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Because I was just kind of like, I get it. You hate superheroes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I don't I don't like the boys. That's why I never watched the show. Everybody and Brian has commented on this before. Like every day, Justin, I get asked, Have you what do you think about the boys? And I'm like, I don't like the boys. So I never watched it. But you know, I like superheroes. So the boys to me is kind of like I mean, I don't mind like different interpretations on things and showing the flaws of superheroes. You know, I like Alan Moore. You know what I'm saying? I like I like stuff like that. So, but I don't know. Sometimes it just gets too cynical for me, especially when it comes to Garth Ennis. Now, oh, yeah. if he's writing Punisher, I'm all for it because it's like, <laughs> that's all we need. But like Preacher to me, it was so different from anything else that he's really done because there was a lot of like, like humanity in that book. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just a farce. It wasn't just dick and fart jokes or anything like that, which it had in there. But uh, there was a lot of like nuance to me in Preacher. At least that's to me. But I really like yeah. that one. But I haven't revisited in a while. I bet I would probably come away with a different interpretation of it nowadays. I don't know. I don't Maybe. know. It's one of those things where you're like, I don't know. Maybe I should just enjoy it from back when I was a teenager. You know? <laughs> Sometimes that can come back and bite you for sure. Yeah. Movies and stuff will do that a yeah, lot. Know, right? Right? It does. Like uh, some movies, though, just get better. You know, Street Fighter with Jean Claude Van Damme, Masters <laughs> of the Universe with Franklin Jella, the Great. So nice. sometimes they just get better, right? Some solid, some solid uh, name drops there. I like it. Yeah. You know how it goes, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just knocked over something. I just watched, uh, rewatched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure the other night. So good. And, uh, oh my god, that movie's so great. Yeah, we have Monday night. We have Chris Matheson. The, the co-writer, the all three Bill and Ted movies is going to be on the show. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm super excited for that. So I, I was like, oh, I better get caught up on some Bill and Ted action. And then... I like, think it's out on, in, on theater or on home video. I think you can grab that one. Yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, this just actually just came in for me today, which is the oh, Evan yeah. Dorkin stuff from the 90s. Nice. It was actually oh. Eisner nominated back in 1993. So. I actually almost wore, I have a Wild Stallions shirt that I almost wore today. So that would have been. That See, been I, wish, I wish you would have worn it and I wish I would have worn mine, but I'm making sure that it's not going to be dirty because I am going to be that dork to wear it Monday night <laughs> when I have them on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I love the hell out of that. What are some of your other favorite movies, Justin? Oh, man. I watch a lot of movies. So, and like I used to be, you know, Tastes change a lot as you get older, especially when when you have kids and and all that kind of shit. So I used to be like that dude that was like into Fight Club, you know? Yeah. So like I still hold nostalgia for it, but I I don't like rewatch it as much anymore. Um, But like soundtrack. 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that Pixies track at the end, always good. Well, yeah, and the Dust Brothers did that. Dust Brothers, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the score, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the score, yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to think, let's see here. Favorite movies. I'm a big proponent for like good stoner comedies. So, like, Grandma's Boy is one that I always throw out. That's a great movie. It's, such, it's a good movie. such a good movie. I remember I didn't even care about that movie. And we were in Panama City one year, like 2006 or something. And we watched that movie for the first time. And we wound up watching it like four <laughs> times that entire yeah. week, man. So good. Yeah, I laugh. I can never not laugh at that movie. Um, you know, I'm a big... Uh, I'm a big like Coen Brothers fan. Like they, I like most of their stuff. And um, God, I'm trying to think of like I can think of more recent stuff. Like Book Smart was one that I was really big into last year. That was a good one. The Lighthouse. I've been like obsessed with that movie. I got a copy of it right there, but I haven't I haven't watched it yet. The Lighthouse. Yeah. Ugh. I, I love now, the trailer. You, you should you should hit me up when you watch it. I yeah. love hearing people's first reactions to that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I haven't watched it yet either, but it's definitely like I'm, I'm I'm just trying to find the time. I've I've got a little one here at, at home too, so like, yeah, don't watch, don't watch don't uh, watch that one in front of kids at all. So <laughs> it yeah. is a mind fuck of a movie. It's so good though. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And I like stuff like that. I remember when I first saw the trailer, I was like, this is going to be fucking weird, man. <laughs> it is. It's so much weirder than you think. It's, well, it's like, it's, it's the guy that created the witch, right? Or, um, yeah, I think it is the same director. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I, I really dug that one. I mean, the style of that was just like so intense. So yeah, I liked a lot of that movie other than the ending. I wasn't big on. I was yeah. just, I mean, I don't like non-endings that just kind of like this is happening and now it's now it's over and it's like okay, yeah, yeah. frogs yeah. ring from the sky and the movie's over, you know, yeah, <laughs> the worst. Do a Grandma's Boy movie review? That'd be dope. That'd be maybe good time. one day, maybe you know, maybe around four twenty, it would be appropriate, I think, to do a, a couple. My favorite stoner comedy is one of my favorite movies ever. That's Dazed and Confused. I love the hell out of that movie. Classic for a reason. Yeah, I remember every time I watched that movie, I'm like, man, I wish I would have went to high school in the 70s. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I'm actually glad I went to high school in the 90s over the 70s. So <laughs> I'm yeah. just glad I don't go to high school like, now. Man, I wish I had like 25 year old dudes creeping on my girlfriend. In high <laughs> right? I mean, that, that happened in the 90s too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it still happens yeah. today. We were, I was, we were goofing around at work today, and I, I don't know why, but. We, I just, we just like doing stupid things at work. We were, you know, and, and doing different voices. And I was doing a Bill Clinton and voice randomly. And then I realized how close it was to the Wooderson voice. And then I realized that Bill Clinton and Wooderson are kind of like the same dude. <laughs> 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 you know, it's kind of like, you know, you know, that's what I like about high school. You know, the, you know that whole line, but that's what I like about why, why house interns, I get older, they stay the same age. Ooh, that's creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> But the thing about Days and Confused is like that creepy dude exists. Like yeah. that guy that like still hangs around with the high schoolers like years later, working for yeah. the city, look at my car, you know. <laughs> and we're down here in the south and we see plenty of that kind of action too. So yeah. They even I love how they mentioned though in the movie that he's a super creep. You know, like that one kid's like this guy graduated when we were like five years old. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. That might be just under Interstellar for my favorite Matthew McConaughey performance. So, <laughs> where does it rank on Ben Affleck performances? Oh man, it's right up there at the top. <laughs> yeah. It's right. It's right between Phantoms and uh, Argo. I so. can't not say Phantoms was the bomb, yo. Exactly uh, right. <laughs> as, a, as a fan of stoner movies, you got to throw that one out. Yeah, Phantoms is a uh, was the bomb in Phantoms. Yeah. That's a funny line, you know, that Jay and Silent Bob did. But like, let's be honest, it was Nikki Cat that was the bomb in Phantoms. Okay, I'll be. I've been saying that since the '90s. I'll keep saying it. So there. I'll you back go. you up. I'll back you up. <laughs> Nikki Cat, who was also in Days to Confuse. Look at how many people were in Days to Confuse. That's crazy. Who was that in Days to Confuse? Do you remember the bit at the end where? Uh, so there's the three kind of like nerdy kids, right? And uh, one of them is mm -hmm. Andy Rap, right? And the other guy, I can't remember his name, but he's the one that's like obsessed with the idea 
that he wants to start this fight with this guy or whatever. Yes. The yeah. guy that he wants to start the fight with is Nikki Cat. Ah. He's like what? So, okay. I'm like a, so I'm like a stoner because I smoke a little bit of weed with my friends, man. So I'm a fucking pothead. And he takes his shirt off, you know, and you're like, I know that guy. I went to high school with that guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's Nikki Cat. Great, okay. great actor. I love him in so many movies. He's in Way of the Gun, um, which I love. He's in uh God, he's in he's in Suburbia, which was Richard Linklater's film he did after Dazed and Confused, which a lot of people don't remember much about anymore, but it had Giovanni Rabizzi, Parker Posey. If it's an indie movie with Parker Posey in it, it's probably in my top 50 movies of all time. Just saying. But I heard a rumor once that she was going to be in a Blade film, but I think they never made that. So they're waiting for the comic to be written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, jump. I'll put yeah, yeah, sure. Let's they're waiting for you to get here. involved. <laughs> Let's That's what you do, man. You just you write celebrities into your shit for no reason. I did yeah. it. <laughs> Nobody's caught it yet. And you know, that's probably a good thing because we're not actually allowed to do that. You know, you can't use likenesses. But well, how does Mike Diodato get away with it? <laughs> <laughs> there is a his, character. His Norman Osborne is straight up Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> like, what's going on there? I guess it, under certain forms you can get away with. I don't know. Interesting. Parody, parody or something. I don't know. So there's somebody, yeah. there's some famous person in finger guns, huh? Yeah. Hmm, I'm yeah. gonna have to figure this out. Yeah, okay. nobody's nobody's cracked it yet. All right, I'm gonna it's, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. Is is it yeah. the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Techni technically, the dog is based on Val's dog, who is a lovely dog and is slightly internet famous. So you know. Nice. Nice. Are you a dog person over a cat person? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I've got. That's dogs. the end of the show, everybody. We appreciate you joining us. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We have we have both dogs and cats here. Uh, here, but yeah, fun stuff. I don't. Yeah, like I don't dislike cats, but um, they're just yeah. I much prefer a dog. I'll tell you this, and I'm not going to spoil issue number four for people out there. But issue number four, if you thought three was intense, wait till you get to four. But there is one thing in four I do want to mention is that at one point they go to like this aquarium and it's called the deep. And that, yeah, I name saw that. The, that's the name of the shop I work at. So I'm just going to tell everybody you did that for us. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> I, I definitely actually, did a double thing. Uh, that, was, that was Val. Yeah, that was Val. Um, who, and like, it's, you're not the first one to catch that name. And, I did like he didn't even ask me about that name or anything. Like he just put it in there. Uh and it's like, you know, it's supposed to be like a visual metaphor of where of where Sadie is going. That makes a lot of sense. That's where I go yeah. every day to to every every day. I, I wind up just going deep. <laughs> <laughs> now it, we we're true. called the deep and uh back in the like so the shop opened in ninety five and then a few years before that maximum carnage had come out. And there was this club um, called The Deep that um, Mary Jane would always go to because Peter was being Spider-Man and they were going through their marital problems. And me being a kid, I remember being like, this is boring as hell. Can we just get to carnage slaughtering some more people, please? <laughs> and uh, But she would go to this this place called The Deep. And then the, and the, the, the video game for Maximum Carnage, you constantly go by The Deep. And I'm like, that's the coolest plug you can get right there but being in finger guns is pretty dope so i appreciate you naming yeah. that after us justin and val really Can't appreciate it. that it. <laughs> oh lord bueller says he hit taco bell today i don't know why he's mentioning that but that's pretty cool um i'm actually watching demolition man tonight uh Ooh. started it last night and then internet went out. oh dude it's oh, great that's yeah. what we're covering friday night tomorrow night um, I will, i'll have to join on that one that movie that. is very, it predicted a lot about the future, which is actually kind of freaking weird. I know, those three <laughs> seashells. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that That's was cool. one I just remember seeing the ad for and just like, I don't think I'm going to like this. And then I saw it and was like, well, I like this a lot. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> I never picked I up on this. My favorite Wesley Snipes performance. Oh, it's a great movie. performance. And he's basically doing the Joker in that movie. You know, huh? Yeah, you're not wrong. It's a good way of looking at it. Because he's wearing like colorful clothes, he's laughing maniacally. He's he's crazy. You could even say that John Spartan is Batman. I saw I watched the Cinemasker review the other day, 
And they brought that up and I was like, they're right. So when I started watching it last night, it's if you watch it knowing that Wesley Snipes is kind of channeling Joker, it's so obvious. So That's cool. Obvious. Wesley Snipes is great. I just got a lot of shit on Sunday night on my live show. I did top five Wesley Snipes movies. And uh, Demolition Man was number three because I had White Men Can't Jump as two. And I had, uh, what was number? A oh, Blade. Come on, right? <laughs> and uh, it's obviously, but, but I didn't have New Jack City on my list and everybody was giving me major shit for it. So we're actually going to have to, we're going to review that one again soon because I haven't seen that since high school. But nice. I don't know. looking through the comments bueller earlier said uh yeah robbie just come to oregon and you can have coffee with me and justin i was like okay i will but let's let everything settle down a little bit i want to go across country <laughs> fly a thousand miles i don't know how far it is but it's pretty far it's probably like a thousand it, at least it's a long day to travel to oregon from alabama yeah uh, exactly. i've done it several times it's uh i mean it's well worth it don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> love going out there so one of the things in finger guns back to finger guns is it's it's a it's an emotional book right so you got the idea that they can manipulate emotions using their finger guns and different uh, different ways of doing finger guns have different emotions yep. and is part of the idea that because i like i was just thinking like people that feel the need to have to control so much Right. Because there's a lot of not just manipulating emotions, but they're trying to like control certain situations through emotions. Is there is there anything in your mind about that? Like, is that something? Hundred percent. Yeah, okay. definitely. Especially with Sadie's situation. Um, and, you know, we see both in in issue three um, and again in issue four, we kind of see how. You know, we're really exploring that doing something like that had, has consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I like that. And how'd you look? You get you totally lucked out into these wraparound covers. I like, did. They're Jen, that's yeah, Jen no Hickman, idea. right? Yeah, Jen Hickman. Yeah. They're fantastic. So, I had I had no idea those were coming until they announced them. Oh, oh really? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask about those because, uh, yeah, their work is amazing, and that uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up grabbing one of the glitter ones for that number one on I the can't. on the side. That thing, that, yeah, that's a good cover. Yeah, they, I, I'm sure just because they've, you know, they've worked with Vault before. They on test. Um, yeah. uh, you know, Adrian has a working relationship with them, and so. And I guess yeah, they're they're a big fan of the series, and like so, when Adrian sent it to them, they wanted to do covers, which was like that was really nice to hear. And they're I love every single one of them. They're great. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. We have, I have them for all each cover, as you see, both covers right there. I like it. Love them. Love them. Brian, yeah. any uh, other things you want to bring up? Talk about. Um, I'm, still, I'm still getting major delete distracted by the color of your wall, buddy. I'm not trying to put you on blast. But... I'll work on it, man. Can you go back to the garage next time? Next time? <laughs> well, it's actually the, the dining room where I was before, but yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll rearrange over there. I'm I don't just know. kidding, man. I'm just joking. no. It bothers me, man. Like I, <laughs> I need to get this. <clears throat> um, so uh, now I, I was gonna say I know we're talking about video games and things like that, but. Uh, I, I did want to, uh, I don't get a chance to play too many. Uh, I've got a, uh, got little ones, you know, and it's hard to find the time, but uh, I, I did get turned on one recently called a, a Grizz. It's this, I guess it's the Spanish word for gray Grizz or something. I didn't know if anybody, if any of you guys have seen that one no. come out. It's a, it's a platformer, but it's like a, it's a, a woman uh, singing and she loses her voice. And then uh, the whole, the game is like, going through doing these little mini puzzles and everything like that. And, and as, it, as it goes, color starts getting back introduced back in, uh, like right. the levels of the, you know, adding colors in and it just, I don't know, just some of the things we were talking about, it seemed like that would be a good one, uh, to, you know, totally. have a good time with there. And it's, it's not one of those super long ones and it is one you can, you know, kind of put away, <laughs> you know, uh, pause and walk away and stuff like that. But, I like yeah. games I can pause and walk away from. I don't, I don't like a big, like, 
commitment on a video game. You know, like if I get pissed off, I just want to leave and come back a few days later. And yeah, I um, I like a lot of different kind of games, but I just don't have time for like like I've had Breath of the Wild for since Christmas 2018, and I haven't played it because I know I'm going to get sucked into it for 150 hours and I just don't have that kind of time. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm the same. I think the last one I played was uh, Metal Gear Solid five and, and also the older I get, like I, I guess I get more stressed out playing those things too. Cause my wife would come down and ask me a simple question and terrify me. I, got, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I could feel my heart actually stop. It felt like, so, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a big uh, fighting game fan. So like that goes with the ability to pick up and just drop it whenever you're done. What fighting game's your favorite? Um, I mean it's there's it depends. It's a hard choice. I mean, like if you're if we go by like what was my first and like most passionate early on was Mortal Kombat. Okay. Um I played all three of the first the first three on Sega Genesis and uh in the arcade all the time but like I, I like playing i like playing weird ones like i have this one called um lethal league blaze you heard of that no so there was a there was a first game called lethal league and this is a sequel um and it's a it's kind of a fighting game but it's there's like a, fl a little floating ball that you have to hit and that's the only way you can do damage is by hitting it and like the more you hit it the faster it goes and if you hit it it turns your color and then if somebody else goes to hit it and they mistime it then it hits them and does damage well that's interesting it's really cool and um uh guilty gear is a good is a franchise i'm a big fan of i just got like the 30 the the one that has like six different names to it but it's it's like 32 bit and it just plays like power metal the whole time it's pretty good <laughs> that's not and there's a that's power not ranger power rangers uh fighting game that just came out a couple years ago that's really really good it's, oh, i think it's called i think it's called enter the grid because like it's got like lord draken and stuff from the comics it's pretty cool okay i might have to check that one out because uh i still like i was just playing this last week i still play the fighting power rangers game from the super nintendo mm -hmm. um and I, I dominate, by the way, with the Thunder Megazord. I'm just going to say. it's nice. yeah. yeah, this game, like, you can, um, like, there's one there's one stage that has a Goldar versus Megazord battle happening in the background the whole time. Oh, cool. It also <laughs> just plays metal the whole time that you're, that you're playing the game and stuff. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a really good time. And it's, like, a really intuitive, like, it's really easy to pick up how it works for the most part like you can kind of like you don't like i don't button mash but like button mashers can have fun with that game and like be competitive and stuff so i really like the accessibility of it super cool are you are you a power rangers fan i am yeah. uh mostly We're like just, super uh, homies now man we're yeah. super <laughs> homies now yeah i've mostly just uh like the of the original uh series but I have nothing against the other ones. I just haven't really watched all the like space and ninja and dinosaur ones yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's completely understandable because power Rangers is kind of a generational thing where it's like the one, when you're at a certain age, that's the one. And you know, for me, it's mighty Morphin. you know, yeah. when I got so, into super Sentai though, that's when I became more of a fan of everything because people think I'm a big power Rangers fan and I am but I'm more of a Super Sentai fan. Have you ever watched any of the original Super Sentai stuff? No. Dude, it blows Power Rangers out of the park. Holy really? crap. There's stakes, there's deaths, there's emotion, um, wow. and there's also a lot of weird, quirky Japanese type stuff that just doesn't make sense here. But uh, it's absolutely yeah. great. It's so great. It's, those shows, along with like Kamen Rider, are just so huge over there. And uh, dude, Super Sentai is freaking crazy. I have a Zord fetish. I buy Power Rangers Zords. I just buy too many toys. But I have a, I have like the big uh, Funko of the the Mega Dragon Zord. The the Ultra Zord where he's in Titanus and all that. Yeah. Yeah, that thing right there. You have it too. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, we're brothers now, man. Yeah, we 
and bros. It's and Bri- Brian's just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking 90s kids. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember seeing that show on TV when I was in college. <laughs> it didn't appeal to you, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't your favorite thing? You obviously didn't uh, go it. Uh, I, well, no, I did do that. But yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was way more into drinking and partying and getting out at that time. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you invite people over to have brews with you and watch Power Rangers. That's what I did when I was 13. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come over to my house and drink Pepsi and watch Power Rangers with me, guys. We'll have some pizza. That's that's yeah. more like what happened. Dude, I had like the full run of like the action figures that the head flipped. To yeah. Where, like, they, so they wouldn't have their helmet on. And you pushed a button and they'd have their helmet on. So you could the say automorphin. The yeah. automorphin feature. Yeah, I still have them all. <laughs> nice. I think my mom got rid of those ones. I still have a lot of my original TMNT figures, though. Like, oh, I that's. Have, like, the first run of TMNT figures, Dude. but they were played with. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the hell out of those figures, man. I think my rough or my Leonardo is missing an arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. You just have the, uh, the last Ronin version. That's what you have. There we go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You've heard about that. I'm assuming Eastman and Laird coming back to do like a dark uh, Knight returns version of it or whatever. And oh, that, oh, really, yeah, the big thing everybody's trying to figure out right now is what turtle is it? Because, Brian, there's only one surviving turtle. The other three are dead, but you don't know who it is because in the images, I mean, first of all, they all look the same, right? They and do. Yeah. they have all four weapons, whoever it is. And uh, I still oh. think it's Leo because to me, if you look at the personalities, you look at the story, I think Leo would be the last survivor. I think Raphael's the more popular choice, so it might be him. But how tragic would it be if it was Mikey? And like all of his brothers are dead and Splinter's gone. And now he's like, got to be like this hardcore, just like you could go into dark places if it's Mikey, I think, but I don't know. It's going to be interested to see, interesting to see who it is. I had a buddy who, uh, he was like, what if they never tell you who it is? And it's up to you to just decide, like you can place your own significance into it by whatever. I'm like, that would be a cop out and people would be really pissed off if they did that. They could just, I don't know, like you could play with the fact that originally they all wore red, but then everybody would just assume that it was Raph. Yeah. And the image, I, the images we've seen are pretty much in black and white. So it's like, well, you can't really tell. So, but who knows? I think it's Leo, but we'll all see. We're, we're all making our bets on it right now is what we're doing. So could be the new turtle. It's Jenica, right? Jenica. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's Jenica, but it could be. I think that would probably people really, yeah, really? I, think. I haven't gotten used to this character yet. Maybe, what if it's Venus de Milo? <laughs> there you go. Pull out that crossover knowledge. That would be crazy. <laughs> people would be so pissed. They'd be like, seriously. <laughs> if they would. Next mutation. What the fuck? <laughs> they would be like so mad. The worst iteration of Turtles. been waiting decades for Eastman and Lair to get back together. Yeah, they got brought back together because of that toys that made us show. Uh, they did an amazing episode on the. If you've, ne- if anybody out there has never watched the toys that made us documentary series on Netflix, you got to. There's a Power Rangers episode, Justin. It's absolutely fantastic. But they got a Turtles episode, Transformers, My Little Pony. There's a Barbie episode that to me is one of the best ones. And I was like, I could give two shits about Barbie, but I was that was an incredibly interesting episode. I tried to watch the Hello Kitty one, but I've never, I've never gotten the Hello Kitty stuff. But um, the the Turtles one, so they they're interviewing Peter and they're interviewing Kevin, and then at the end they bring them together. They haven't really spoken in forever, so it's a really emotionally intense episode of a toy documentary. But it's it's fire. It's pretty dope. Hey, Mike's the guy who had that idea. He's here. He's like, I still like that idea. If uh, you just don't know who what turtle it is. <laughs> Nice. People would be pissed though, man. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. You know. Oh, yeah. So you're friends with Donny Cates, right? This is true. Yeah, that is true. Uh when you did your show with Bueller, he kept like doing like a counter every time you mentioned him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> how did that how did that friendship blossom, man? How'd that come about? Uh from being a, a super fan when he was nobody, kinda. 
uh, back when we were reviewing, when I was reviewing books with my friends, um, we reviewed some of his early stuff from like Paybacks and Interceptor, um, things like that. And then, you know, from there I found the Ghost Fleet and Buzzkill, and then he wrote God Country, which is what exploded him into getting into Marvel and everything. So, yeah, I just was always a fan of his work and talked to him back when he was, you know, not a big time Marvel writer who was too busy all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and Yeah. So we just kind of hit it off on like that level. And so we just DM'd a bunch and then we met at like four, four cons, five cons, something yeah. like that. And we'll hang out at Barcon and he'll tell me too much stuff about his upcoming projects. And yeah. <laughs> That's super cool. It seems almost like every single one of his mainstream ideas comes from like just hanging out at a bar with friends and being like, what if, Frank Castle got the spirit of vengeance and became the herald of Thanos. <laughs> right. I remember when he like he was just got announced to do Venom and he was showing me art for it and he was telling me about it and he was like, Yeah, it's just like fucking nineties, like that like ridiculous ninety shit. And that's he's definitely kept true to that. <laughs> yeah, right. It's I, I love it, man. Uh do you do you know does he like give you any kind of information about what's to come? Or anything like that on those books? Um, he can't really on uh, Marvel stuff. Like he can't send me sneak peeks. He can send. He has sent me stuff for like his creator own things before. Obviously, he hasn't done one in a while. Um, but uh, yeah, like he's, he's told coming me, up though, doesn't he? Yeah, and I know about two of them. And yeah, yeah put when you see him announced, just put them on your list. Just do oh, it automatically already. Whatever Kate's does is on my list. I, I think he's. He's a rock star right now in the comic book industry. Yeah. And uh, I, one time, like the very early days of Venom, uh, I was probably like, it was when I first got on Twitter or whatever. And because that's what somebody was like, well, that's where the comic book creators are. They're on Twitter. So I went on there and, and I remember he, he had posted something about being a big Buffy fan. Right. Yeah. So I was like, man, I, cause I'm a huge Buffy fan. And I was like, man, what's your favorite season? And he said, season six and homie, that's my favorite season of Buffy. And from that moment on, I was like, I'm a Donny Cates fan for life, <laughs> for life, for life. And yeah, he's a big, yeah. ba and he's a big blade fan too. He is. Life. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got a five year plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's like him and his venom plans. He says he's not going anywhere. He's got it mapped out years. Good. Good. He can stay on that book as long as he wants, as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm a big Venom fan, too. And uh, I guess we just like the same shit. That's weird. Um, but uh, is, like, is he writing Thor? Yeah, and he's writing Thor right now, doing a really great job on Thor. He's he's causing, he's making some waves on Thor right now, man. So. I was going to say, I haven't read Thor in a while, and, and I picked it up because he was writing that. But, and yeah, I'm, that one, like, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. He's uh, going to yeah. do like big bombastic stuff with bold decisions for sure. Oh yeah. 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 And, uh, uh, yeah, the, I, I do remember, yeah, I guess I, I heard about him through Robbie on the, when God country came out first issue and, uh, you recommended I pick it up and yeah, I was, I remember, uh, yeah, yeah, that one was a, I really enjoyed that series. That was, you know, really heavy kind of stuff. And I, uh, I, I did like the big action and everything like that, but I, I really liked the the interaction between you know uh, him and his family. You know the 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 main character. You know Emmett. that that just yeah Emmett, yeah that just like that was just tearing at me. You know reading all that stuff. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah, his first interaction with his granddaughter, and when he like could finally remember when he first got the sword, like them just sitting on the porch, like yeah, mm -hmm. the twelve foot yeah. sword. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah. It's fantastic yeah. stuff. I uh, it's, my buddy Lance always makes me cry. Yeah, my buddy mm -hmm. Lance got me right. a God Country shirt. I still have it. Uh, the uh, come and take it, you know, with the sword or whatever. Like, I got that <laughs> shirt, yeah, yeah, that's good For stuff. Sure. That's uh, and Jeff Shaw's artwork. Oh my goodness! And then after God Country, that's when I read Buzzkill, and I was like, holy crap, Buzzkill's good. I still yeah. haven't read uh, I've read Paybacks, but I haven't read Ghost Fleet. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, I haven't read that. The ghost fleet. The ghost fleet. I uh I keep it in stock at the at the shop, but I haven't actually been able to uh check it out myself. It's I've sold it to many people. I'm like, yeah, I, this one's great. 
read this one <laughs> on my on my old on my podcast that i was on before uh like i had a catchphrase that came out of me just having having said it enough times of ghost fleet is dope so i actually own a shirt my friends that were on the show with me one christmas made a shirt that said ghost fleet is dope on it. <laughs> nice so i have a ghost fleet is dope shirt that's awesome. nice one of a kind yeah i um i own that's i only own one original page and it's from that series nice super cool it's the most meta page ever cuz it's the opening page of the last issue where they knew that they were canceled and like they that like their book was forced to be something like i don't know if you know the story it's pretty public now because they collected the whole thing it's mm -hmm. called the collection's called the whole goddamn thing yeah um it was originally supposed to be 12 series or 12 issues series and they got canceled like around well, like really early, but they had already drawn six issues and they were cut down to eight. And so rather than making Dan redraw anything, Donnie fit six issues into two. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> the, pace, the pace just picks up and goes freaking bonkers. You can tell when they knew, like when it shifts, it's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, in the last issue, the first page is the two of them walking out of a building talking about having written the book and stuff. And like, there's like a funny <laughs> little joke about like writing something and then like they just get struck by like a meteor or something like that and they're blown up and it has a huge automatopoeia that says meta boom on it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I was when I interviewed Daniel Warren Johnson back in the day. I told him, I was like, that's like my favorite page. It's so freaking funny. And he was like, I still own that page. And I was like, ooh, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool. That's cool. Yeah. I was going to say something. I can't remember what it was now. This is what happens on live. Too, uh, much, too internet. much awesomeness. Too much awesomeness around here. Well, yeah, I'm just sitting there thinking, I, I guess even though my pile's pretty big, I need to add Ghost, Ghost Fleet to that. I, I, I really want to read this now. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's bananas. It gets wild by the end too. It's cool, and I mean, it's Daniel Warren Johnson, like you know, doing his doing what he's doing now, but just before anybody knew about it. Yeah. Oh, so I mean, he did the art. Yeah, it's a Danny oh. Donny Donny Cates Daniel Warren Johnson book that happened before either of them were anybody. Man, I, I had no idea. And you say you have this at the shop, probably. Yeah, I keep it in stock, buddy. Oh, okay. My box number is 35. <laughs> I know. I'm aware. Okay. I'll put it in box 36. <laughs> okay. 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 I always look up and down when I go in there. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> You're not allowed in that room, buddy. Just so you what? know. Yeah. Okay. I'll you stop going in then. You can't be like, oh, I know Robbie, so I can come in here. Steal things out of people's boxes. That's not cool. That's something that happens, by the way. People try to sneak into the sub room so they can go through people's boxes and pull out like the hot book that's like i don't know like this week the speaking of donny case's newest issue of venom is now like selling for like 20 bucks or whatever i'm like damn man he could just like take a shit and take a picture of it put it in a comic book and people be like first appearance of donny <laughs> case <is> turd <laughs> and it start going up like crazy that's, uh, that's what i was gonna say is that he wrote a really really nice uh thing right before finger guns came out about the book yeah. And and it was really nice and kind of touching, and I hope that they uh, put that in the graphic novel when it gets collected. Yeah, I think that's our plan um, is to put it in the trade because it didn't go in the, uh, any of the issues. But yeah, he wrote a forward for us, and it was yeah really really nice and touching, and yeah, that's super cool. But enough about Donnie. Show's not about Donnie. So <laughs> yeah, every interview I do. <laughs> so. <laughs> So here's a question, and there are no wrong answers. Um, are you into sports at all? Yeah. What kind of sports? Uh, what's your like? What's your favorite sports, and what are your favorite teams? And there uh, are no wrong answers. <laughs> there's wrong answers. There's always wrong. Yeah, answers. there are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. I I watch football. I play fantasy football. I'm a Raiders fan. Um. I like basketball. I'm a Boston Celtics fan there. 
That's and, close to a wrong answer. That's close <laughs> to a wrong answer. But yeah, okay. but that's always one that's that has a chance because you know all I gotta find is a is a stinking Lakers fan. And that's what it's found it one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll you out. No, uh, we're no longer bros. <laughs> yeah, it's all over now. That was a short-lived bromance. Thank you. Joe. <laughs> all in one episode. Yeah. <laughs> the highs and lows. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so Celtics, uh, same thing with hockey. I like the, the Bruins. Um, I used to watch baseball, but I just can't, it just bores me anymore. I don't have time for baseball. Now we're uh, enemies. Now we're enemies. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, honestly, like back in the day, I don't have time for it anymore, but my wife and I would basically just th throw like any random ESPN on and watch whatever, you know, anything from poker to trick trick shot billiards to cornhole to yeah. they have like competitive lumberjacking sometimes i've watched that before i've been watching a lot of like that stuff especially fucking cornhole because there's been no sports and i yeah. found myself one day just watching like and i was like man cornhole is actually intense as hell <laughs> so yeah, like, it, like <laughs> i've never even thought about it but it really is man yeah, like four bagger oh my god yeah you're like oh my god he did it he did the airmail oh my <laughs> god <laughs> yeah yeah i caught myself the other day watching the axe throwing uh championship you know <laughs> and uh and uh, it was tense i mean like you know i was just like wow just like <laughs> yeah, you know five I, minutes for the first five minutes i was kind of like how are they scoring this and then i was like oh my god yeah, whoa <laughs> I feel like curling during the winter olympics so i just freaking hone in on that i love yeah. curling so i love long. curling yeah it's i fun. It's fun to watch. They do a league yeah. here in our town now. They like started a curling league, and like me and some friends were like seriously like, dude, all we gotta do is just drink some beer, right? And just like <laughs> sweep some ice. That's it, right? And I'm like, and I'm like, I, actually, I think there's more involved. Everybody's like, no, nah. I'm like, I think there's more involved. I think it's uh, yeah. tougher than you realize. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder. <laughs> it's an they, Olympic sport, goddammit. I don't know if we have a league, but there is an ice rink here in my town that like you can every once in a while you see some. Uh, some teams practicing in there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. I, I can do, I think I could totally be that guy just sitting there, just screaming at the person that's sweeping, you know? And like when you're watching the Olympics, they're always speaking in like, you know, not English. And they're like, what are they saying? I'm like, they're saying sweet motherfucker, sweet, sweet, <laughs> stop, stop, sweep, sweep, sweep. I was like, I don't understand it, but it's great. I love half the time it like, doesn't matter what country they're from, they still say the same shit. Like they're they still say stupid <laughs> stuff, even though they don't speak English any other time while they're communicating, but they still yell the same shit that for whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah. I also love that like like when the uh what was that? It was the last winter Olympics where the US team like just dominated. She did well, yeah. Yeah. And we're just like that just is like the happiest bunch of dads you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, who they just justified all the all the nights of practicing to their wives. They're like, see, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing more than just drinking. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh my goodness. I actually yeah, have I a uh, in, oh. USA curling T-shirt that I wear sometimes. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I was well, up in uh, Winnipeg for uh, work one time, and I was uh, well. Uh, and then we were in this one town that like. It was so small, like it had, uh, like the hotel was the only restaurant in town, you know, and, and everything. But it also had the ice rink and it had the curling club. <laughs> so I remember going to eat and then watching people curl, you know, <laughs> you know, for like hours because that was what you did <laughs> in that area. So that was, yeah, I don't know. That's how I learned what was going on. Was Winnipeg it. sounds awesome. <laughs> um, it does. Yeah, it's hey, it's like North North that. Dakota. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. What? It's North North Dakota. North North Dakota. Yeah, That's it's, basically it's, Canada, man. Extra North. It's the Plains. Yeah. So actually, when I was up there is when they had just lost the Jets. Uh, the Jets had moved to Phoenix, so they were pretty burned out. You know, they were pretty bummed out about that. Uh, you know, losing a team to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. In Canada. So, But they got them back now. So. <laughs> right. Oh, hey, I remembered, I remembered that book that Rebecca colored. <laughs> Sparrowhawk. <laughs> Sparrowhawk, okay. Yeah, I and remember when that came out. It has a whole nother, uh, like you know, a whole nother palette aside from that's completely different from both Finger Guns and She Said Destroy. You know. Yeah, yeah. in uh, 
I like how when she said destroy, it seems almost like it's a bit pastel -y. What's her name? Lisa Frank-esque in a way. But the, the color choices in uh, Finger Guns are completely different. It's so bold. Like, yeah. I love the... Uh, I'm a big Grant Morrison fan. And I, I remember when he was designing the Batman and Robin logo. And he was talking about how they would use colors that didn't necessarily... That would pop against each other, like purple and green. Like purple and green. Yeah. And and things like that. And and that 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 works so well for me in this book. It's It just... It pops. Like... The line work is amazing, but those colors help it just shine, mm. just pop out. It's just absolutely brilliant. I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. the way she does the bat. Like whenever it's more of like a, a talking head panel, she'll throw in like a red or a green or, you know, something that goes with the moon, pops everything that's going on around it. Absolutely. Yeah, Next I was question. Some, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I was noticing some really cool gradients that she was doing too with the some of the uh, backgrounds with the sky and things like that at dusk and certain things like that was like, I mean, it was really slick. Oh yeah. If you won like uh, the, the scene where they go to the park and there's like the pirate ship uh, boat and everything uh, that whole scene, when she, when I first saw that me and Val were both like messaging each other, like, did you see it's so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, it's great. What she's done with the, all the colors and yeah, those gradients. And then, um, there's one scene in issue three where Sadie goes home and the color palette changes a lot. Um, and I think I remember you mentioning that it, that it caught you off guard, Robbie. Um, and that was actually, yeah, I, I wrote it that way. Um, uh, that I wanted it to be this kind of from Sadie's perspective, like we're in Sadie's world with her. And so there's like this purple protection that the courage gun is giving her kind of deal yeah and so i wrote in there that i wanted like the stark purples and and reds and all that and the way val and rebecca ended up bringing that to life like my words look stupid compared to how it came out it was <laughs> it's i love that sequence and that page in particular yeah i've heard that you write very uh loose scripts so that your artists have plenty of room to work with there so yeah, that's my <clears throat> that's my goal. Um, is I, I want to let them have as much freedom as they want, and then if they have questions or aren't clear on something or want, you know, a, a more direct description of something, then I'll elaborate. So you're not like an Alan Moore where you're going to send a page and a half to describe <laughs> what happens in the panel? Nope. I literally, I actually, I kind of like this. I'm I'm thinking about coining it. Um, Adrian once during a call for uh, issue five when we were talking about where what we're, where we wanted to go uh, called my writing uh, my writing style efficient and I was like ooh I like that <laughs> in high school I get called uh, an efficient and concise writer and engineered was another thing that people would say I don't like wasting words and uh, sometimes at work I get because we 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 do a lot of social and work you know like people at the shop like people. Will, well, Facebook message us or, or anything like that. Right. And yeah. I'll just be like, yep, you got it. <laughs> and they're like, Robbie, you got to be a little bit more. I'm like, why? I mean, yeah, you got it. Dope. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> like I just, Brian knows my text messages. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I get insulted every time. I'm like, I, I expected more than that. Like, I, like I reached out to you, you know, I, I expect more. Yeah. However, <laughs> if someone just sends me a K, <laughs> I get, I get, livid. I get livid. Okay, okay is lazy for sure. At I'll at least type out okay, yeah. comma. Give me that you out. got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's me being a little bit more expressive. All right, here's another question, and there are definitely wrong answers for this one. I let you slide on the Celtic stuff. I'm happy you didn't mention the Red Sox. However, no. there are some serious repercussions on this. What is your favorite breakfast cereal? Oh, geez. I don't even eat that much cereal anymore. As a kid, I was I was a peanut butter crunch fan. We're best friends again, dude. That's my favorite cereal. <laughs> I'm yeah. not even kidding. <laughs> number yeah, two was... is cinnamon toast crunch, but number one is peanut butter crunch, my man. Yeah, peanut butter crunch was, I mean, I would eat that until it cut the roof of my mouth. Like, yes, yes. With It tastes better when it when you start bleeding. In your mouth, you know, it's even that better. Iron, that iron flavor. Yeah, in there. yeah. You, that's what they're talking about when they say you and the cap and make it happen. They're talking about make your gums bleed. Yeah, the roof of your mouth just bleed. 
yeah, it's a it's a it's a two way street. It's a relationship commitment. <laughs> yes, yeah. right. You don't get to ride for free. You don't get to ride on captain ship for free, man. You gotta there's gotta be a level of sacrifice there. You know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, peanut butter crunch is a great one, and they keep selling out of it at my grocery store ever since this whole pandemic thing started. And I'm like, this is the worst thing about this entire thing. And I'm like, actually, it's not. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> right. But. But it's pretty awful. <laughs> it's pretty awful. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Damn it. Everybody else is bitching about wearing masks. And I'm just like, I just want my peanut butter crunch. I'll eat it wearing a mask. That's what I like to do. I just put the peanut butter crunch in the mask and I eat it like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Have like an extra big puppy mask so I can just chill there. Yeah. They're actually one of the kids at work the other day was eating some peanut, like some like M&Ms or something. And I was like, just dump the whole bag in your mask. Nobody's going to know. Who cares? Nobody's going to know or judge you. Just, it's just, why not? Right. I don't know. It's, it's like a filter, isn't it? Yeah. It's the filter in the mask. Yes. <laughs> it helps. Uh, yeah. It helps to spread even more. If, you know, if, cloth stops you from breathing the molecule droplets out, right? The molecule, what? The water droplets, <laughs> the molecule droplets. Um, if, if the cloth stop, whatever, you guys know where I was going. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Cereal is the big thing. It's of me. Over. This bit is over. Yeah. The bit's over. Yeah. It's, it's been ruined. Molecule droplets. Oh my God. That sounds like my, the title of my next EP. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Love it. I'm going to do a Sunday night. I'll do a freestyle called molecule droplets, whatever. Yeah. Cereal's <laughs> a big thing in my life. I just got this Twinkie cereal, but I haven't tried it yet. It's probably going to suck if I had to guess, but you know, I just got um, a, like a frosted honey bunches of oats. It's pretty good. I haven't had that yet. Pretty good. Very I've seen it. Like flavored. I'm a big fan of the honey bunches of oats, you know, and uh, they did a caramel apple one. That was delicious. I love the maple pecan. That's my favorite. Um, yeah, that's, you got good taste in cereal, man. You may not have good taste in basketball teams, but you got good taste in cereal and comic books and music okay. and movies. Yeah, we'll give you that. We'll give you that. Brian, what was the last cereal you bought? Uh, I think the last cereal I had was when I did that Sour Patch Kids video with you. <laughs> Which wasn't Which, as bad as we thought it no. would be. No, I think it was better outside the milk, uh, but uh, but yeah, it was it it didn't actually have an aftertaste that I was expecting. I was expecting it to like be good at first, and then you know the come language. back. Are we talking like a trick or like a Fruit Loops? Uh, it had the typical fruit flavored cereal, kind of like a Fruity Pebbles type vibe. Yeah, but it did have that sourness. Hmm. Yeah, which was yeah, really weird. That. that would be mm -hmm. weird. Yeah, it was, but it wasn't as bad as you thought it would be. And like Brian said, it was way good outside of the the milk. Like just munching on it, I think that cereal is done now. Un like, so I could, wouldn't yeah, have thought I, that that one would have been. <laughs> yeah. I got a uh, Jolly Rancher cereal that I've had for months that I've just been too nervous to open because I'm like, I just this is gonna suck. I already know it's gonna suck, Probably. and I don't want to open it. But I'm a yeah. cereal fiend, so why not buy it? I don't know. I was going to ask, is there a lot of Raiders fans in Oregon? I, I know there's, I'm a Seahawks fan. I, my dad's from that. Uh, I was raised a Seahawks fan because my dad's from Seattle and I was like four <laughs> when the franchise started. Uh, so, but I know there are some there, but do, do they have a fair amount of Raiders fans there? Yeah, I feel like there's a, a pretty good amount of us. Like I actually, I, in my fantasy football league, I think out of 12 of us, I think like four or five are Raiders fans. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. When Are he you, said uh, when he oh. said Raiders, Brian, I, I was like thinking, I was like, I bet he's pissed that he didn't say the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, uh, fans up here, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to be a uh, you know, it used to be a rivalry because like and uh, uh, but uh, it's funny here, like uh, you know, here in Alabama, uh, you know, one of the most celebrated athletes is Bo Jackson. And because uh, Bo um, knows, baby, Bo knows. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you remember a couple years back, but uh, Auburn beat Alabama like with a kick, you know, in the last second. I don't, I don't know if you remember that happening, but uh, one of my friends is an Alabama fan. He was like, "Man, I just know they're going to keep showing that play over and over again." I was like, "Do you know how it feels to be a Seahawks fan and watch Bo Jackson run over, run, 
the run over uh what's his name that um, asshole that i never liked anyway and then boss. The yeah the boss yeah brian bosworth and then run out through the the exit of the stadium they, they show that every 30 45 minutes i think on ESPN. <laughs> I mean, you know and it's like why do i have to keep watching this <laughs> <laughs> what's that i think it's mandatory that they play it every yeah every 25 minutes yeah yeah feels like it feels like it feels like <laughs> it so are, are you uh are you happy there moving to las vegas or was yeah that- i'm fine with it like i'm not tied to oakland i just um the way i became a raiders fan was uh i had a step i so i was born in idaho and my step one of my stepdads when i was a kid um was a huge raiders fan we used to he was like the kind that would like get all into it and like you know he had like the tattoo on his arm and he would the Raiders and so yeah I was I was a sucker for it when I was a kid and I just stuck with him yeah through yeah. all the bad yeah I mean weren't they pretty good in the late eighties uh, yeah 90s they were even good in the early nineties the last time that they went to the Super Bowl was oh god what year was that? I want to. It was in the 90s, but they went – it was when John Gruden got traded as a coach to the That's Buccaneers. That's right. And they played the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl and got destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the last time they were good, though. Mike, you're breaking my heart, man. You know it. <laughs> you know you're breaking my heart, man. But it's okay. Uh, Bo Jackson. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an Auburn fan, so I'm a big Bo Jackson fan. I love the hell out of him growing up. He's – yeah, yeah, I mean, Bo Jackson. Playing oh. both sports, you know, and Correct. doing it with way more flair and class to me than Deion Sanders. I love Neon Deion, don't get me wrong, but Bo knows, Bo knows. Bo knows. He could have had a longer career in both sports if he would just, I mean, in either sport if he would just picked one probably. But, uh, oh, man, Bo Jackson. Yeah. You know, you were talking about having to see him run over the boss every so like all the time, Brian, right? Mm-hmm. It was like when um, Jacoby Ellsbury became a Yankee, but he was a Red Sox guy, and he was like the fastest base runner at the time, and he stole home on the Yankees. Like, it was so embarrassing. If you, Brian, I know you watch a little <laughs> bit of baseball, but if you steal home, that's incredibly embarrassing, right? And they would play yeah, oh, that yeah. damn thing all the freaking time, and I would just, I get so mad. I'm like, why they got to be doing this? Why, why are they doing this? <laughs> I remember this. I was there. I wasn't there, but I was watching it. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. All right. TV shows. You uh what are your favorite TV shows right now, Justin? Oh man, lots of good TV shows right now. So let's see here. I'm really stoked for Umbrella Academy season two. It's coming out. Um been watching the heck out of Doom Patrol. I just gotta rewatch season one of that. I've only seen the first episode of that, so I've heard really good things about Doom Patrol. Yeah. It's um, yeah. it's it's got a lot of good character development. Like that's the best part of it. I mean, that it is like wild and crazy and fun, but like the characters make it for sure. Plus, it's got Timothy Dalton in it, friend of the show, best James Bond ever, Timothy Dalton. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm through episode eight of season one, and uh, I just I, I am trying to find time. I I, I absolutely love it. Uh, I do like how there's like definitely an overarching story, but they definitely have specific episodes. You know what I mean? Where like there, oh, there's yeah. some, you know something that starts and ends. You know, and uh, yeah, it's man, yeah, it's really good. It's yeah, there's been some bust out laughing parts too. Like oh yeah, I mean, I don't know, just like, is not <laughs> that fun when you get to see him. It, it's he's he's honestly kind of the best part of the show. Oh That's wow, yeah, he should be. He should be. He should be. I heard it does a lot of uh, honor and respect to the Grant Morrison run and uh, even embraces some of the quirky fun of the, the Gerard Way run, which uh, I'm a big Way fan, so I'm super pumped for Umbrella Academy season two. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm, I'm super pumped for that. And being a Morrison fan, I'm really excited to check out Brave New World, which is uh, out now. So, Brian, I don't know if you were aware that it's actually out now, but it's out. And it's got Solo in it. The guy that played Han Solo in that Solo movie, which I freaking love that movie, and I love that actor. He was also in, you were talking about the Coen brothers. Have you ever seen Hail Caesar? Uh, no, but I have it actually on my on my list for Netflix right now. I plan on watching it soon. There's a great moment with him 
yeah, he's really good in that movie. And there's a really funny moment in there. But yeah, he's in he's I watched the Brave New World trailer today. Cause I actually, it took me by surprise. I, I saw all these things popping up. I was like, Oh cool. So when does that come out? And I'm like, Oh, it's, it's already out. Holy cow. So awesome. of course you got to get a whole new streaming service to check it out. But whatever. Oh yeah. I just got a uh, shutter like a few days ago. So I need to get on there. Cause I hear great things. They do some original movies and, and I hear really good things about the creep show uh, TV series. I, yeah. I'm looking forward to watching that. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but me and Val actually the night I signed up for it, we watched a movie on there that was pretty pretty fun, pretty wild. It's called um, uh, One One Cut for the Dead. Okay. Have yet? I have not. It's in. It's kind of insane, and it's hard to describe without spoiling anything. But um, we'll start with that. It starts with a 30 minute single cut horror movie and then it does something else entirely we'll, we'll go with that interesting yeah i have to check it are you a big horror fan uh yeah like um i wasn't when i was young so like i missed a lot of things but i yeah i love horror now i'm um, getting more into it in recent years and yeah there's a show on there i'd never heard of that like I watched the trailer for it and I was like, oh my god, this looks kind of rad as hell. <laughs> Cause it's like it's like creepy horror mixed with like Vikings, like that show, like that Viking show from yeah. Viking. Oh wow. Yeah, kind of like that. It it looks wild. And like all the reviews on it, everybody's just like, oh my god, oh my god, can't wait for season two. Can't wait. So yeah. This is on the shutter. Yeah, I'm okay. pulling it up right now. It's called The Deadlands. The Deadlands. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah I'm kind of saying I never really, uh, horror's never, it, well, it hasn't been one of my favorites, but as I'm getting older, I'm definitely appreciating it more. And I will say that Vault is actually helping me with that, by the way. The, the horror series that Vault puts out, you know, are always like really solid, you know, and, and so that's definitely helped me appreciate it, you know, more. Like the plot? The plot. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness, the plot's amazing. Yeah. And I've, I've read I've read Curse, which is the other one that Tim Daniel and, and Maurice did, but I haven't read the other, what is it, Burning Skies or something like that? Yeah, I think that yeah, that sounds about right. I've got it, but I haven't read it yet. But Michael yeah. Maurice is one of my favorite writers right now. I think he's just absolutely brilliant. I actually I think I picked him as my favorite writer last year. Uh that's a good pick. He's just great. Wasted space alone, man. I love the hell out of that book. Hayden yeah. Sherman's probably one of my favorite artists. I definitely picked him for my favorite artist last year because between Wasted Space, Thumbs, and Mary Shelley, uh, Monster Hunter, oh my goodness. Th yeah, name me another artist that did three books in one year and at the same time, even you know, like one month there was an issue of each one out. Like they don't even, you can't, they don't do that anymore. You can't do it with the scheduling. Yeah, he's an amazing talent. Have you ever met him? No. He looks like he's 14. I've seen <laughs> pictures of him, and I was like, he does look kind of young. <laughs> yeah, I think he when he started in comics, he was like, you know, 18, 19. I think he's still like 20, 21, you know. Oh, he's got a bright future ahead of him then. Yeah, have you ever read um, – God, he did a book with Chris Sabella at Aftershock. Cold War? Yes, Cold War. Thank you. Yeah. That book, dude, everything he did on that was insane. And the story on that's phenomenal, too. I'm a big Chris Sabella fan, so. Yeah, me oh, too. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I, Crowded I one of my favorites. Yeah, Crowded. I, well, uh, did, you get, did you read uh, High Crimes? When he did it? Uh, the, that's like the only one of his I haven't read. I've read like his old like uh, like Alien versus Predator stuff. And okay. like, you know, all that uh, I read, I read that, and um, all of his old series that came before that. Um, did you ever read? Uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on names so much today. He had an Oni Press series, Heart Heartthrob. You ever read that one? Uh, no, I've seen that one though. That one good? Yeah, I like it. It's um, they're coming out with the third and final installment of it. Uh, this year they're they're putting it out like digital for singles and then collecting it physically in trade um and that's with uh robert wilson the fourth on art and that's a really good one too oh. there was one that he did 
that only one issue came out and then I've never seen another one, but it was like trust fall. Did anybody check that one? out? It was, it was only like one yeah. issue. Yeah. Oh, I, I really it? liked that yeah. issue. Yeah. I've but been waiting for that. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if I signed up for it. So that, that I, I, I was afraid that had happened because I remember thinking about that one time because I remember reading the issue and thinking it was great. And then I never saw one past that. Hmm. And yeah, he lives up in your area, right? You guys hang out, have coffee, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he's over in Portland with like with uh, Bueller and them. I'm about three hours away, but oh, okay. uh, him and I do like when I go to town. One of my favorite shops is called Books with Pictures, and oh. he he shops there too. So I've I've we 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 run in similar circles when I do get over there, but I haven't I haven't bugged him to like meet up for coffee or anything yet. <laughs> Well, he's a big dog person too. You know, you guys could probably go to the dog park, you know, and hang out, have some coffee. Maybe Bueller will show up with his cat nipples <laughs> on a leash at the dog park. That'd be a great idea, wouldn't it? My dog, yeah. my dog would chase the shit out of his cat. <laughs> Justin, I got one more question for you. And you probably knew this was coming. Most people do. Um, you ever had any kind of weird paranormal supernatural experience? Saw a UFO, a ghost, anything like that? I just finally saw my first strange lights in the sky a few weeks ago with a friend of mine named Kevin. Um, but has anything like that ever happened to you? You know, I'm boring on that front. I've always been adjacent to it. My stepmom has like great, you know, I don't want to say great, but like she has a lot of stories from when she was a kid of like things with her, with her house. And they believed that like parts of it were haunted and stuff. And then like my wife, when I, the closest I've gotten, I think is my wife when I first started, um dating her and then like a little bit after we got married um we had to live with my in-laws for like six months and that house they believed that that um her grandma like still resided around that house and so you'd see like just every once in a while like stuff be put away that you don't remember being put away that kind of stuff interesting are you into that kind of stuff are you a believer are you trying to see stuff or anything like that i i would say i am a believer like i don't even like watching the paranormal activity movies because i believe that shit could happen <laughs> like i like when it comes to like spirits and ghosts not like ghosts but like spirits i totally i buy in i believe in spirits and like Heck yeah that there's other shit out there that we don't understand we do these things every so often on the channel called teen dog shades nights um, and, and on, on those shows, you know, you, you wear some shades and, uh, and I talk about, you know, paranormal stuff or ancient civilizations, UFOs, anything like that. Right. Nice. And, uh, we, we've had fun with them and we actually got one coming up soon where I have more guests. Cause usually it's just me solo, right? Just me being silly. Maybe mm -hmm. I've had one too many beers and I want to talk about aliens or something. And, uh, I just throw the shades on there right here. The official teen dog shades from nice. the boom studios book from back in the day, which I love. Um, but anyway, I mean, look, yeah, see, they know, they know what's going on. Fable knows what's up. <laughs> Fable knows what's up. And so we had, when we had Leon on the show, she was like, I want to do a teen dog shades night. And I was like, we need to get a teen dog shades night together of, of comic book creators. That would be, fun. That'd be something you'd be interested in doing. Yeah, I do it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You just got to have shades. That's all. That's all you need. I they don't even have to be the official ones. They just the perfect pair. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I'll put you down as committed. You'll have to get my boy Elliot Ray Hall on there sometime for sure. Bro, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. I was actually, uh, last week on the show, I had my buddy Kevin, him and uh, Stefan, Stefan Nilsson. They uh, they just uh, kickstarted a project together called Extinction. It was a like a zombie adjacent thing that they did years ago. And uh, they just kickstarted a remastered version of it. And Kevin's artwork on it is amazing. But it successfully fired off. Um, but I was talking to them last week about it. And Kevin's a big um, UFO conspiracy kind of guy. And he's the guy I was with. We were at his studio when we saw the lights. And as big as he's into that shit and as big as I'm into it, neither of us had ever seen anything like that. So to experience it together was pretty dope. So he's actually going to be on the show next week, um, next Saturday night with me. Um, Jonathan Strickland from the PCP crew and uh, Dylan from Dylan's Comics, who I know you know, Justin, because he had you on the show. And uh, 
I just remembered a, a creepy ass story that happened when I was reviewing comics mm -hmm. a few years back. Um, the my comic shop shares um, space with an antique mall, and it used to be in this old building in the middle of Redmond, Oregon. That was um, like it used to be a bar. It used to be the only theater in town. Like you know, like eighty years ago, it's this old old building. Like every step you make creaks throughout the entire place. And um, we were reviewing books really late one night, and everybody left except for me and my buddy Chris. And uh, we were just standing over by the comics racks. And so, like you know, like I said, there's an antique mall all around the comic store. And so it's just full of old creepy shit begging to frighten, you know, young children. And <laughs> we were sitting there just bullshitting and talking about something, you know, I think whatever the latest Scott Snyder book was at the time or something. And all the lights go out in the whole place. And then the first and only thing to turn on was this old Santa Claus, uh, like figurine thing that lit up and it said it was like ho 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 oh my god <laughs> bolted out of the <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> we're like i was like nope not not even <laughs> fucking playing with that so we got the power back on to go back in that's crazy as hell man the ghost of santa yeah. the ghost of old saint nick <laughs> it was creepy it was definitely that's awesome, awesome. hope to write a book on that someday the ghost of old saint nick <laughs> that's a great idea that's a good one but yeah last week on the show uh stefan had worked has worked at uh aftershock right mm -hmm. and i even mentioned i was like well have you ever met elliot ray hall and uh and then he was like i don't know who you're talking about then i mentioned midnight vista he goes i know exactly who you're talking about he's like he's a great dude and he says he's very open to talk about his experiences obviously um but i'm a big fan of his work and i would love to get him on the channel sometime soon and uh and chat about obviously his work and and his experiences because I'm I'm really into that and I believe him. So he's a, he's a great dude. He's another buddy of mine that yeah definitely recommend bringing him on your show. He's fun, great guy. Heck yeah, heck yeah. He used to be a stand up comedian too. So I've heard like, that before. He's always got good stories and good you know perspective on stuff. Hell yeah! I feel like it's been mentioned enough. It's just gonna happen. It's a matter of time. I just gotta. I'm sure if I just sent him a message, he'd probably be down. So, I actually, know I know Stephen, uh, no, Stefan Nelson. Yeah, went from his aftershock days. So I used to hang out with the the whole crew. Yeah. Oh, he's a super cool dude, man. He's great. Yeah, good. Dude. Yeah, last week was my first time meeting him. I've known Kevin for years because Kevin's kind of local. You know, he he was here in Huntsville in the '90s when he was doing Shut Up and Die at Image. Um, was when I first met him, and. uh and we're pretty solid friends now. And uh, so that was a really cool meeting Stefan and, and hearing some of his stories and stuff like that. So their book is funded now. So it will be coming out the extinction book and it's, it's going to be awesome. Hell yeah. Trust me. It's going to be awesome. Kevin's work is amazing. And, and Stefan was a super, super cool dude. And yes, Billy, there is no spoon. And that <laughs> is the secret of the universe. Seriously. All right. Well, Justin, thank you so much for being here. Once more, Finger Guns issue three came out like two weeks ago. It was rave, rev it was critically acclaimed again. We loved it here at PCP. It made the top 10 yet again. And issue number four is coming out in a few weeks. And yo, don't just take my word for it. Brian, was, was issue number four dope? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't just don't, don't just take Brian's word for it. Justin, was issue number four dope? <laughs> Oh, it's the best. <laughs> the best book in the year. The dopest. <laughs> so real quick, Justin, your final thoughts. And once again, thank you for being on the show. We've had a lot of fun. So just final thoughts and, you know, plug your plug your shit again. Yeah, I mean, uh, final thoughts, I guess I'll just say I, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I love your show. Love your 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 audience. And um, I love every time I get to see you review my book. So appreciate that. I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving it. And yeah, like uh, look forward to lots more tears uh, moving forward. Yeah, we're we're, we're prepared. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope issue yeah. three. Uh, I think that issue three caught a lot of people off guard um, because you know you we you're not going to go zero to a hundred, but we can go fifty to a hundred, and we did we did that with issue three. So I'm glad people have been liking it, 
issue four, the last page in particular, will kind of one up that. You know? <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope everybody's looking forward to it. Uh, issue five will be out in August, and then we'll get a trade. I believe we're aiming for October. So uh, yeah, hell yeah! And thank you for being. Thank you once again for being on the show, and and thank you for taking the time to comment every time I review one of your books. I really do appreciate that. And that's, that's super cool. Even if I'd never, I'm really bad at responding sometimes because I'll just be like, I'm not responding today to comments. And then I'll, I'll like miss like 40 of them, you know, but uh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Hey man, I appreciate when you review them. So no problem. Brian, do you got anything else to say? Uh, no, I appreciate the time. It, it's been great talking to you and, and uh, yeah. Same. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. And maybe Justin wanna... can get you in touch with Rebecca and she can give you some tips on uh, how to paint that wall. <laughs> uh, that would be great. Yeah, if she could give me tips on that, that would be, that'd be fabulous. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I'll switch you. Nice up. gradients going in. <clears throat> yeah, she'll texturize the shit out of it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I would like to see a picture of that Kelly commission, though, sometime. Good chance. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I'll send you that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you out there in the PCP Army for joining us tonight. And thank you for watching on the rewatch. If you're watching on the rewatch, we really do appreciate it. Tomorrow night, Demolition Man, live movie review, 8 p.m. Central Time. And then Monday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, Chris Matheson, the co-creator, Bill and Ted, is going to be here. And he got in touch with us. And I was just like, what? What? And we're going to be talking about why right now is the perfect time. For Bill and Ted to return. Anyway, thank you guys so much. We're PCP. I'm Rockin' Robbie. Thanks for rocking with us. Y'all keep on digging. We love you. See you next time.